everyone. Welcome to Managing My Money with Rosa. Today is April 17th, 2022, and we are going to review my $3,496 dividend portfolio. Today, we're going to look at setting goals. I believe setting goals is very important. We're going to look specifically at my long-term goals, my short-term goals, my purchase goals, what exactly I did purchase this week. My, we're going to do a mini lesson this week. It's going to be on market orders versus limit orders. We're going to look at my projected payments, exactly what I did get paid. We're going to jump out to trackyourdividends.com. It is where I keep a quick snapshot of everything in my dividend portfolio. And then we're going to go over to my Google spreadsheet, update a couple of things, and just do a quick financial review of everything for the year that I have in there. If you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. I'd really appreciate if you'd hit subscribe down below. I am trying really hard to reach 500 subscribers. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much for coming and spending a little bit more of your time with me. Everyone, please hit that thumbs up button. And I would love to hear about your dividend portfolio down below if you have one. And if you don't have one, I'd love to hear what you might be interested in hearing about. My channel is all about my dividend journey. It is about my personal budget, about my finances. Um, I look at my debt and just where is all of my money going and what am I doing with it? So we're gonna start today by talking about goal setting. I believe goal setting is very important. I have long-term, short-term, and purchase goals. And I come back and I reevaluate those, not too horribly often, but I do look at them every week at the least. If you don't have goals and you just invest willy-nilly, I don't know about that. You really should have at least one long-term goal. That goal is the pinnacle of where you wanna be in five to 10 years short-term goals. Guys, you should at least come up with one short-term goal. And when you reach it, make another one. Goals keep you focused on what you're doing and why you're doing it. And dividend investing can be long and slow. And if you don't have something that gets you excited about it, you might stop dividend investing before you really get anywhere. So definitely having those short-term and long-term goals. And then purchase goals. Guys, you should not just be going, oh, I want that. Oh, I want that. Oh, I want that. You need to stop. Look, why are you purchasing something? How many shares of it are you going to purchase? Is there a particular price point that you want to get in? You need to know what you're getting into before you just willy-nilly go, oh, I want some of that. Because some of that might not be a really good choice. So always have those goals in mind. Now, I have a lot of short-term goals and a lot of long-term goals. But that's because my husband... I blame him. Yes. <laughs> My husband says that if you want things to come to fruition, you have to speak them out. So I started with one or two of each realized, you know, I need a little bit more. I need a little bit more. And now we are here and I do look at them and reevaluate them. So the first is a hundred thousand dollar dividend portfolio. Guys, I know that's going to take probably 10 years, five to 10 years. Um, right now I'm sitting just under $3,500. I would love to earn $80,000 a year. <laughs> Nowhere close. Don't laugh. I'm sitting at $230. That's not a lot, but it's more than what I got before. That $80,000, guys, reality, I know that's probably 20 years out. Um, if I ever make it to that goal, I really would like to, though. Um, for all you naysayers, I actually am a math nerd. Uh, because of that, I know that if I have between one and two million and I'm earning at least 4%, guys, I know that $80,000 is completely achievable. Now, again, sitting at a less than $4,000 portfolio, um, I know that I'm a long ways off from that, but it is something that I want to strive for. I also want each of my positions to drip one full share. DRIP stands for Dividend Reinvestment Plan. It's where I have my brokerage automatically reinvest any dividends I receive back into that stock. So currently two of my 24 positions that I get dividends from do DRIP. One of them is a full share plus more. And the second one isn't quite a full share, but I count it anyways because I don't plan on growing it anymore intentionally so that it does get to that one full share. 
And then the last thing I want is a house daddy. So that $80,000 up above reality is that if I can even make $40,000 a year, my husband won't have to go to work. We'll have replaced his income fully and extra, which means my dividend portfolio will continue to grow. And that is a big part of this is that it continues to grow even once he becomes that house daddy. That's what we lovingly tease is he would love to become. Short-term goals, I would love to have a $5,000 dividend portfolio value by the end of this year. Don't know that that's going to happen because, again, I'm still sitting at $3,500. Um, I, I don't know that I can squeeze an extra $1,500 out of the budget. Um, maybe, maybe not. Right now, I'm only intentionally increasing it by $50 every month, and that's not a lot, and there's no way there's Sorry, I can't speak all of a sudden. There's no way that's going to get me up to that $5,000, but you never know. We will see. One that I am currently reassessing quite often, actually, is to earn $20 a month by May of 2022. Um, I started the year off so strong, and I was so stinking close to this, guys. And then... And then, and then one of the positions I'm in decided to cut dividends, not once, but twice. And because of that, my um, current payments have gone backwards. I am at $18.50 a month average out. I'll show you how I get that number later. But I think I have a plan to pull it back up. But again, it all depends on the market. And mostly it depends on funds. And then I would love to grow each position by monthly. That $50 that I said I'm putting in is that by monthly growth um, for each of my dividend positions. So right now I'm doing really good. I just got paid. So I'll put another $25 and finish out everybody that deserves their $5 growth. And the last short-term goal is to receive a dividend check each week. Now this is something that I do pay attention to all the time. Uh, last week I mentioned that <laughs> May's looking a little sketchy on one week. Um, one of you put down in the comments some suggestions. Thank you so much. I am in the process of looking into all of it. See, the biggest problem here is funds. I'm working off of a very limited budget when it comes to investing. My husband and I sometimes see eye to eye and sometimes we don't. So when we get a little bit of extra money, I'm like, ooh, investing. He's like, no, it needs to go for this. And we go back and forth until finally we settle somewhere in the middle. So Funds really stop me sometimes, but I do always look and check, am I receiving a dividend every week? So now let's roll into my purchase goals. Again, there are some weeks, guys, I don't have any purchase goals. I just am rolling along, filling in my $5 where I can. Most weeks though, I do. And these are something that I look at at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, just depends on what's going on. That first purchase goal is to get three more shares of OHI. Three more shares of OHI would bring me up to roughly six shares. I would like to, so this is a change, PSEC was at three, um, increasing it by three shares. I've decided to up that to, nine, or to 15 shares, which would put me around that 19 share total. Um, if I add 15 more shares, that's gonna give me roughly 90 more cents, 90 more cents, and PSEC pays every month. So 90 more cents would pull me up almost another dollar towards my $20 a month goal, but we will see how that all goes out. OXSQ, if you have been around for a while, you know that I am trying to, I was trying to get to 150 shares of OXSQ. I decided to pull back a little bit, only get 25 more shares. Right now I have 105. If I get 25 more, that would put me at 130 and that basically would drip one full share. So I'm gonna stop at that 130 again, changing up what my goal is for that and that's okay. And then the last one is to start really intentionally increasing Aries Capital, ARCC. Um, I really like Aries Capital. Um, I just, the growth of it, the dividend of it. So I would like to start to up that to get 75 shares, um, but it's a quarterly pair. So I'm not 100% certain. I'm probably gonna, when I get the other three, I'm probably going to balance Aries Capital with something else. But right now I don't know. I just know that I need to get some OHI, PSEC, OXSQ. And then I will start to focus on Aries Capital and then a monthly payer. And I'll kind of go back and forth with the two of those. So let's look at exactly what I was able to purchase. Oh, and then something else about these purchases. 
guys, they're the same, except for this, the 15 more shares. Um, it's the same purchase goals I've had for probably a month now. And again, remember on the last slide, I said something about limited funds. Yeah, limited funds are kind of keeping me in a standstill. And then we have my purchases. Yeah, there's nothing. Um, and again, money, uh, the more I, my husband and I sometimes go back and forth on any additional other than the $50 that we've agreed goes in every month. Um, sometimes there's more and sometimes there's not. And right now, well, we're sitting at zero extra. So that's all right. Uh, next week, I should though have my $5 investment challenge, yay, um, to talk about and seeing how many new positions I was able to open. So now we're going to look at a quick mini lesson, and this is a limit order versus a market order. If you already know what they are, drop it down in chat. After we get done, if this is the first time you've heard about a limit order and a market order, drop it down in chat because I'd love to know that too. So essentially, a market order is basically going to guarantee you to get into a position. As soon as you hit submit to your buy order and you've picked a market order, the your brokerage is going to automatically pay whatever is the asking price. And you just get stuck with whatever it is and you really don't have any choices. The positive thing about a market order is you are guaranteed most of the time. I can't think of any market orders where I haven't. Um, market orders, you're, you're guaranteed to get the shares that you're wanting or the dollar amount that you're wanting because you're not fighting anybody. You're not waiting for anything. You're saying, yes, I wanna buy. I wanna buy at whatever costs it costs me. And then you're in. And then limit orders, sometimes it takes a while for a limit order to get placed. And that's because I tell my brokerage, I only wanna pay this amount for the position. And if it doesn't reach that, I don't get in. So thinking about that OXSQ, my goal is to get in under $4. So I kind of sit and wait around. I don't have a market order in or a limit order in for it because I'm waiting for it to get back under. But there are times when I tell my brokerage, I only want to pay this amount. And if I don't get in, guys, I don't get in and that's okay. So there are differences between them, pros and cons to both of them. If you want in a position and you don't care at what cost you get in, you put in a market order. If you want it only at a specific price point, you put in a limit order and you don't budge, but that's okay. So let's look at projected payments. So this week I'm supposed to get three payments, AG and C, Acre and Maine, yay. Um, next week, I'm only going to get one payment. It's at PSCC. So doing all right, moving along. Everybody's getting there. So this week, I got um, AG and C paid me 62 cents, and I earned 0 0.049 shares. Acre, I earned a dollar seven. I got paid, or and then I got 0 0.068 shares. And main. I got paid 52 cents and I have a love-hate relationship with Maine and my brokerage. Um, my brokerage for some reason in Maine just do not agree. Some months it clears automatically, some months it does not. This month it did not. I just show that I have a 52 cent dividend being paid to me, but it's processing. So, and then we went into Good Friday. So the markets weren't open. So nothing cleared past Thursday. So we will see Monday how many shares I actually earned, but I know it's not a lot, but that's okay. So what exactly did I get paid this week? $2.21, yay! Again, guys, I know this isn't a lot, but I only have a $3,500 dividend portfolio value. And with that, $2.21 is not bad. It's not bad at all. And I like to think of the positives. Hmm, what can I actually get for $2.21? And guys, I know it's not a lot. Um, if somebody has a dollar menu, I could get two things off the dollar menu. And depending on the tax, I could even pay for everything. Um, I could go into the Dollar Tree. I can get one item and I'll still have some change left over to go towards next week. So 221 I get isn't a lot, but I have to look at those positives and the perks. Otherwise, that's depressing, but nobody wants that. So now we're going to go out to track your dividends and then over to Google Spreadsheet. So I love Track Your Dividends. Um, I put everything inside of here. It is not connected to my brokerage. However, you can connect to your brokerage. In a quick snapshot, it tells me how much I have invested or how much my total portfolio is worth. And then it tells me if I'm up or down. And right now I'm up $60. 
my yield is 6.59%. My yield on cost is 6.71%. Um, in another video soon, I'm gonna talk about the difference between the portfolio yield and the yield on cost. I know that I'm getting roughly $230 a year. And then I like this because you can come in and see that Acre, I have just over three shares. Thursday, when the market closed, it closed at 1630. That was up 11 cents on the day. I put in my average cost and then it tells me how much I'm up. So I know that I'm up 229 and then my dividend yield, my yield on cost, and then one of my favorite boxes, my annual income. So I know that Acre is going to pay me $4 a year. So this is just a quick snapshot view of everything that I have shares in. Now, some of this does not um, oh, my FSPTX did actually come in. Sweet. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes it's sitting at zero. Um, FSPTX is not a dividend payer, but instead it pays capital gains twice a year. So I wasn't certain if it was going to come in, but it's been saying zero. Um, but this is just a quick snapshot. And guys, I don't own much of anything. Two of these, one of these, three of these, 12 of these, one of these, two of these. Um, the only things I really own a lot of are ORC, which is 113 shares, OXSQ, which is 106 shares and my BTG, which is 105 shares. And those are really the only things I own a lot of. Um, I love the upcoming dividends window. Now I have the free version. You can actually pay for this. The free version has lots of ads. I really don't care because um, I'm not ready to pay for anything just yet. But this is one of the views I love. It tells me who they are, how much I'm gonna get paid for the month, and then any possible projected changes. But I just love that it tells me how much I'm going to get paid in one quick view. And then it gives me some values down here. We'll do something with those in just a minute. And then my next favorite view is the calendar down here. Um, last week, if you were here, April looked really good. The week of May looked a little, this week in May looked a little sketchy last week. It was all gray. So somebody finally posted their dividends. I will get something on the 27th. Yay. Um, somebody suggested there were some things on the 25th that I should look into. So I'm still working on those. But this helps me track, am I meeting the goal of getting a payment every single week? And then if we continue down, we see that there, it tells me what the date is, how much I'm going to get per share, and the total that I'm expected. So I can look here at this. And then when we reach out to the next month, I know that FDHY hasn't confirmed yet on the 1st. Jeppy hasn't confirmed on the 6th. I'll get another payment on the 15th. Um, oh, and then we roll into June. So I love that I can come down here and look at who has confirmed and who's still waiting out. So we're going to take these three values and drop them into my Google spreadsheet. I am a true, true, true numbers nerd. Absolutely love everything about spreadsheets. Um, oh, except I don't want to do that. I wanted to do a paste special, paste values only. All right. Um, I have it set so that all of this information is imported from another Google spreadsheet that I use. And this is just the graphs section of it where it calculates and tallies everything up. So I know that I have received $59.69 for the year. Um, if you break that out over the whole year, that would be $14.92 a quarter, $4.97 a month. 16 cents a day, one cents if I was getting um, 20, 20, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And if I was working that 40 hour work week, I'd be getting paid three cents. So this is a culmination of everything that I have earned for the year. Probably one of the most exciting things that I have seen this week is that this year's quarter one and quarter two have finally, yes, finally um, out paced out grow outgrew last year what I made so just over a quarter in and I am now have made more than I made all of last year for dividends yay um so let's come put these numbers in so I know it said 18 something 18 what 1844 1694 94 and then I have no idea what that last one was 94 21 53 
So yay, it has gone up 47 cents, my monthly dividends. So now we're sitting oh, just back underneath that $19. Yay, <sighs> moving, moving, moving in the right direction. Um, I will be getting 62 cents a day, three cents an hour. And my favorite is the hourly wage, 11 cents. Definitely not enough to replace my husband's income yet, but we're kind of slowly but surely getting there. So, so excited that I have moved up on my monthly dividends. <sighs> Maybe with my PSEC purchase, I've actually hit that $20 by May. Um, considering it's the middle of April, I don't know that that's gonna happen, but that's okay. We may just readjust when I'm gonna get that $20. All right, so let's hop back to here. Um, if you have not already, guys, please take a second and hit that subscribe button down below. I really appreciate it. Again, I'm trying to get to 500. Um, thumbs up if you have not already, and I would love to hear any stock that you're interested in that you think I should look into. And just thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today as I review my dividend portfolio. I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.